Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you my first 3D relief carving on my upgraded 3018 CNC router. What I'll be doing is taking a free 3D relief from TurboSquid. I'm going to import that into Fusion 360. From there we're going to generate two tool paths. So I'm going to do two cuts. The first one's going to be a rough cut to clear out the majority of the material. And the final cut is going to be the finishing pass that will be done using a V-carve milling bit. It's worth mentioning as well that I'm using completely stock settings in the Gerbil software. I haven't tweaked any of the feed rates or any other important settings like that yet. So the results of this cut is really going to set the baseline from where we can improve from over the next few weeks and months. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and I'll show you what I've got. So this is a website called TurboSquid. And those of you that are into 3D modeling, um, you'll have definitely seen this before. It's a great sort of place where people can put up their models. You can either sell them or just release them for free. And you can pretty much search wherever you want in here and there's almost a guarantee that someone has some kind of model that you're after. So in this case, what we're gonna be searching for is 3D reliefs. And you can see it brings up a lot of results here. A lot of these are gonna be paid because they're really, really good. But what you can do is if you go up to sort by, change to lower prices, that'll basically give you all the free stuff. So the one I'm gonna try here is this Swan Relief. So we're gonna click that. And you can see that looks really nice. There's quite a bit of sort of detail in there. And I think this is a really good first carving to try out. It's not too complicated, but it's not too simple either. Uh, I think it'll be a great cut. So what I've done here is downloaded that model and imported it into Fusion 360. And I've basically just placed it on a block of wood. Now I've measured out the block that I'm gonna be carving and this represents the real size. So it's important that you do that so that you can define the area that you're gonna cut. So now I'm in the manufacturer workspace in Fusion 360. And you can see that I've set up two cuts. And the first cut is gonna be a pocket cut. And the reason I'm using a pocket cut here is because I'm splitting this process up into two parts. So the first part we're going to be using a standard end mill, either a two or a three millimeter bit. And the second cut we're going to be using a V-carve milling bit to add in the detail. So the reason we split it up into two cuts, the job of the first cut is going to be to remove as much of the material as possible, ready so that we can go straight on to our second cut, which is the most important one, where we add in that detail for our final 3D carving. So you can see here that the first cut is called a pocket cut. So if we go up to 3D, you can see that we've got two types of cuts here. We've got adaptive clearing and pocket clearing. And these are really rough cutting strategies and they're commonly used, as I said, to remove large quantities of material very quickly. The reason you wanna do this is because typically you wanna spend the most time carving the detailed parts of the model, right? That's the bit you don't mind giving more time to because you know it's gonna result in a much better outcome. So to get to that part quicker, we can use this adaptive clearing or pocket clearing so that we can get all the necessary material out of the way and get stuck straight into creating the carving and adding the detail. So adaptive clearing, basically what that does is it tries to remove all the material pretty much in one go. And it puts maximum stress on your spindle your frame and you, you do need to ensure that your machine is capable of using a technique like adaptive clearing. In my case with a 3018 CNC, I probably could do it with softer materials like wood, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna go for pocket clearing and I'd advise you do the same. So the difference between adaptive and pocket clearing, so pocket clearing, what that does is if you imagine say you were gonna cut out five millimeters of wood from your material. So with pocket clearing, what it would do is, just as an example, it would step down one millimeter at a time to cut away that five millimeters. Whereas adaptive clearing, it's gonna stick the emerald straight in five millimeters, put the spindle under maximum load, and then make that cut, taking out the full five millimeters in one pass. As I said, in this case, I'm using pocket clearing because there's less load on the machine and it's just gonna be a better result, I think. The final cut I'm using is a parallel cut. And what this basically means is if we go up to 3D and click parallel, you can see it says there it's a widely used finishing strategy. So to do a parallel cut, we're gonna be using a V-carve milling bit. So the milling bit itself comes down to a point, as you can imagine, a V-shape. And that 
point at the end of the milling bit can be used to carve in those really fine details that are make, gonna make our 3D carving look really, really good. And as I said before, this is the part that you wanna be spending the most time on. So that pocket clearing gets all that material out of the way, ready for you to go onto your parallel cut and add in those awesome details. You can see here, if I right click on pocket cut, I can go to simulate and you can actually see that tool path in action. So I press play and speed this up a little bit. You can essentially watch the cut in real time and sort of speed it up and you can see exactly how it's going to do it. And you can see in this case, if I go to the side of it like this, you can see that it is stepping it down layer by layer, as I said, using the pocket clearing and it'll get to the bottom. So there we go. You can see the cuts complete. And if I zoom in, you can see those steps there. So if I change to orthographic. You can really see those steps there, so those little blue lines. So that's each pass that it's doing. It's coming down in steps as opposed to going straight down and cutting the whole thing. So now if I go to the parallel cut and simulate that one, pre press play, you can see there the difference. You can see we've got a V-carve bit now. So I'm going to hit play and speed that up. Now you can see what that's doing is it's stepping up over the model and really adding in those details. So I slow it down a little bit more. So if I zoom in there, you can really see the Z axis moving up and down, carving out all those details in our 3D relief. So now that we've got our two tool paths set up in Fusion 360, we can export them from here, load them into the Gerbil software, send them to the machine, and it'll start cutting. So let's see how that goes. overall result not too bad at all you know for a first cut on some scrap wood that's probably full of moisture on a really low cost machine I'm honestly really happy with that outcome I do think there are still ways we can improve it there's obviously the software settings that I haven't played around too much with and there's also the other upgrade that I'm going to add which is adding that third rail to the machine which should give it a little bit more stability and it'll just make the whole x-axis itself a lot more stable and eliminate that wobble that we saw in the previous video. What I thought was interesting about the cut was the one side of it came out really clean and the other side had a bit of scuffing on it. That scuffing typically would require some manual cleanup using a Dremel and a, an end mill, a ball mill. I think that's most likely to do with the wood grain because you cut it in different directions with the grain on the left and the right side of the block. But yeah, overall, super happy with how that turned out. I'm really keen to try out some different materials. I'm gonna try out some bigger carvings as well. And I'm hoping to slowly transition over to some other software that has a lot more features in it. Fusion 360 is great, but it's really not built for kind of 3D reliefs and sort of really creative woodwork. I'm currently looking for other software packages as well. So um, stay tuned for more of that. And obviously I'm going to be creating some more tutorials on how you go about setting up your first cut, what free software is available for, for those of you that don't want to purchase a license for something a bit more pricey. Hopefully you found this video kind of insightful. Thanks for watching. Remember to give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you in the next video.